hi and welcome back to the full cup wellness with me queen vk thank you so much for watching my channel don't forget to click the subscribe button to show your support and hit like to like this video all right today i want to talk to you about microplastics you've probably been hearing this word a lot lately um, in the news around the science community it's a big buzzword for the next year at least so what are microplastics basically there are two types there are either the microplastics that were purposely made small or the ones that break down from larger pieces of plastic into tiny little microscopic pieces of plastic they're called micro plastics because they're around the micrometer scale so you've got centimeters millimeters micrometers nanometers there are also nanoplastics which are in the nano scale nanometer scale um, of size so um pl basically plastics are made up of a polymer of molecules so you, sometimes people will call plastics polymers and they're a type of polymer a polymer is just the word for a repeating chain of molecules that are attached together they're, all the molecules are the same and there's just they're just stri strung along in chains of molecules um, and what gives plastics their different properties are actually the side chains so you've got the main the main chain you got your side chains of molecules and when those degrade off the main Part of the plastic that's what you can smell you can smell the those toxic fumes coming off plastics and when you burn plastic you can smell all those those molecules they're not de they're not broken down into nothing when you burn plastic when you burn anything matter isn't destroyed it just turns into a different form so it becomes this so once you burn the plastic it becomes this vapor which will, can get into your lungs, it get into your food, it can get into the soil, it get into the water, it gets into our air. Which brings me to my next point, why do we care about microplastics at all? Well, they're polluting our environment. Every single part of our environment is now affected by microplastics. It's found in the air, the soil, water. Massive concentrations of microplastics have been found on the ocean floor. And that matters because if you know what bioaccumulation is it means that the food chain um it starts off with the tiny things at the bottom of the ocean floor or in the the in the soil among the, the particles of dirt and i'll stick with the water the seafood analogy the small little creatures little plankton they get eaten by slightly bigger creatures or by giant whales that eat plankton <laughs> and krill. Oh, krill eat plankton and then the, then the, all the bigger things eat the krill and small things eat the krill. So imagine if you've got krill eating a little bit of plastic, like little specks of plastic, but then you've got some crabs eating that krill and they eat a lot of krill throughout their days so each one of those krill with a little bit of plastic in their belly get taken up eaten by the crab now that's got lots of krill with lots of plastic and then i don't know a shark or octopus or something comes along and eats a lot of crabs and now it's got a lot of plastic inside those crabs which are taking up all the plastic in the krill so higher up in the food so the, the word bioaccumulation means that the higher up in the food chain you go the more that pollution accumulates this is also how heavy metal this is the word heavy metal poisoning works so if you've got lots of mercury in your water, the little things eat it, then they concentrate up into the next sized thing up in the food chain until we eat it and then we get sick. But how 
how can microplastics make us sick? Well, there've been a there've been experiments in human cells in petri dishes and in animals, so we don't necessarily have the evidence to show what plastics would do inside our actual bodies. But when we look at it in animals' bodies and in petri dish in our human cells, immune cells in a petri dish, they actually die. The toxins from the microplastics and the experiments list the size of the microplastic that we use, the amount of time, the temperature, everything. So under certain conditions, the cells will die when they're exposed to plastic. Microplastics, they're so damaging. Literally, <laughs> the experiments that were done in fish showed that there were um, developmental issues and um, other health eff effects, defect, health defects and effects on the fish health. Um, hormone signaling and reproductive health was affected in some species of fish. And basically, from what I read, the smaller the microplastics, the more damage it can cause to the cells. The larger microplastics sometimes showed very little correlation between it and effect in the cells or the animals and that, and the amount of larger size microplastics. But when we're going down to the experiments where they were using teeny tiny nanoplastics, nano sized micro like really really small microplastics as well they were the ones that were really affecting the bodies of the fish um the reproductive hormone signaling i think there was some papers that were saying that some plastics are similar to the hormones in our bodies is similar in shapes so they can cause disordered signaling within our organs and pieces of microplastics have been found in all organs of our of the human body that processes our waste um, and per, and cleans and filters any part of the blood and, and our lymph and everything. Basically, there have been microplastics found in lungs, cancerous lung tissue, and that. You know, it, I'm already scared. <laughs> In addition to that, I recently watched, there was, there's a documentary on Netflix at the moment called Plastic Ocean, and it shows how the buildup of, of pieces of plastic in the stomachs of seabirds and aquatic life, turtles, um, they, those pieces of plastic take up the space where food should be. So they've basically starved by filling their stomachs with plastic. And you... It's kind of a graphic documentary if you want to watch it, but they they show they cut open the the stomach and they show these poor birds that have just got bulging pieces just protruding like it's about as much plastic as that would equate to like kilos of of weight in a human. So imagine how difficult it would be to fly to to survive even. By, because they've accidentally swallowed some debris that we've we've thrown out into the ocean. Now they aren't all necessarily microplastics; they are larger pieces too. But all of these plastics contribute to the damage done to our ecosystem. Now, what can we do to reduce our impact on the environment um, regarding microplastics? Uh, number one is avoid plastic touching your food and drink. So if you drink bottled water, you're actually consuming a lot more microplastics than if you were drinking tap water, which is strange because there's so much tap water in, uh, there's so much microplastic in our water. But if your water was stored in a plastic bottle and the heating and cooling, gentle heating and cooling, will leach the plastics into the water or into the food or into the, your juice, whatever, and you will be imbibing it eventually when you, uh, you'll be having a lot, you'll be consuming a lot more microplastic than you would if you were just going to have water from your tap. You can also think about filtering your tap water too, but basically if you're not buying bottled water, you're making a good impact on the environment and your, and your health. The next thing 
that it is avoiding fabric and yarn and carpets made of synthetic fibers so um, you might have heard that a lot of dust is made up of our skin cells but also think about all the fluff that comes off your clothes every time you 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 know you're folding your washing and you see all the dust flying in the air if you've got synthetic clothes pillows and sheets and that then you're just making more microplastics just float up getting into your lungs flying around the room so one avoid buying synthetic items fabrics clothing yarn to craft with um but also you want to vacuum a lot more regularly um, if, if you are surrounded by plastics so so that you're not breathing in all those little tiny particles that could be harming your lungs and potentially causing cancer um, the there is something you can do if you do have a lot of, of synthetic clothes like I do um, I've recently stopped buying synthetic clothing but um, I don't just want to discard all of the stuff that I already have because um, I feel like that would also be quite wasteful so what we can do is either wash them really carefully wash our clothes really carefully or use all the alternatives to washing in the washing machine um, so washing really carefully for example we can use um, this is called a microfiber plastic catch bat I don't know what the actual term is but it, the brand name is guppy friend <laughs> you can also buy another um thing called a cora ball but they both basically they catch the microfibers the plastic waste in your washing machine and then you just discard it carefully in your rubbish bin instead of putting it down the drain so you've got to remember that our drains aren't a waste receptacle you're actually seriously littering if you put anything down the drain. If you put your rubbish down the drain, even if you put your food waste down the drain, you're seriously littering and you, you have to think carefully about how you're affecting the pipes if you're putting oil and food down your drain and, and the environment if you've put plastic waste and rubbish down your drains. So we can wash carefully, we can um, use cold water. Remember, plastic likes to be... It likes to degrade when it's heated and warmed so we will reduce the wash temperature below 40 degrees and you want to um, make sure that the, the washing the washing machine is full so that your fibers aren't rubbing too much against each other and also especially if you use the delicate wash cycle hit the water plus button and that will reduce the amount of rubbing together that the clothes the fibers will do um now there are, are alternatives to washing your clothes in your washing machine this might sound a bit strange for some people who you know used to just chucking everything straight into the wash at the end of the day but sometimes if you just if you wore your clothes like just for a few hours while you were just out popped out and back um, don't need to wash them just air it out a little bit get rid of any smells you can, you can get rid of bacteria by airing your clothes out in the sunshine have a lot of air flow around them if you don't have a sunny spot to air them out just make sure there's a lot of air flow around the garment um, so that will, that will help waft away this the smells and hopefully kill the bacteria that are trying to live on in the crevices there that's why the sun shines better the sun putting it out in the sunshine will help kill the bacteria uv radiation <laughs> you can also um spot clean if you've just got a little if you've just dropped a little dab of sauce somewhere you can just just clean that little area or just just clean the deodorant off the armpits and the rest of the, the garment can just just dry it in the sun my favorite thing to just hang it in the sun air it out and then pop it back in your wardrobe for next next wear and 
I've been also made aware that microfiber cleaning cloths are synthetic and every time we clean our bathroom and kitchen with them we're just making more plastic microplastic waste and pollution to go down the drain so what I've been doing is I've been making my own multi-purpose cleaning sponges out of natural fibers I've got cotton on one side and hemp on the other I've left the sides open so that you can I can well I've got little hands so I can scrub like that or um, basically I mean if your hand doesn't fit in there it doesn't really matter basically that it's open so that it's really easy to dry you want the airflow around the fibers like I said it's, it's a lot easier to dry when, when you've got you've got all the airflow and hanging out in the sunshine don't use a dryer that just takes up electricity if you're not on solar power oh and the dryer is going to make more microplastic waste anyway it's going to heat up the fibers and and just going to rub the fibers together and create more dust dust so um yeah i've been using that to clean my these kinds of things to clean my bathroom and kitchen or in the shower this is a multi-purpose scrubber um, contact me for orders if you'd like one or um, I might actually put up the a free pattern on how to crochet one of those on my blog so keep an eye out um, another thing I've been making to reduce my plastic waste in the bathroom is these makeup remover rounds so they're all 100% cotton we've got a few different colors these are also for sale um but i gave i gave one to my mom and she just started using it as a coaster and i was like you know it's a makeup remover around right you just, just scrub your face and she's like oh it just works really well as a coaster so yeah actually it does it, it absorbs the the water a lot nicer than our glass coasters that we're using at the moment actually um all right so I hope you enjoyed my t my TED talk. <laughs> ah, please um, like, subscribe, and comment below um, for more and um, comment with your suggestions for more videos, please, and any more crochet suggestions too. And I'll be taking commissions, so contact me if you'd like a little crochet something something, maybe a beanie, a scarf. You decide. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>